Hey, what's going on, guys? We are Descent to Norel. I am Skid Gore. This is Cool. We are back, and this is going to be a really fun episode, all about Spanish whore, man. I love Spanish whore. Got this love the Spanish women. Yeah. As we'll talk. Euro whore babes, all yeah. that good stuff. Definitely Cheers. a cool Paul Nashy tribute. The man himself at the end. Hope you stick around, guys. Cheers. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, This is our Spanish horror, so let's roll. Go, what you got? Well, we're figuring we're gonna throw ten a piece at you, so. And there's so many, but this would be a huge long pod horror, pet, horror oh, cast, yeah. whatever we are, yeah. <coughs> so whatever. let's try this. All right. Out of the good old Euro Shock collection, we got the horrible Doctor Orloff, uh, Jess Franco, of course, the master. I mean, of uh, sexploitation. Uh, yeah. One of the most the uh, most dangerous. Director alive. Yeah. Um, According this, to the Catholic Church. This this movie was 1964. This came off of uh, 1962's The Horrible Dr. Hitchcock with, of course, the very lovely Barbara Steele. Um, and this movie is basically about this Dr. Orloff who kind of makes these um, theater goers, these entertain entertainers, disappear. And. Um, Inspector Tanner, he goes and he wants to kind of go undercover to find out what's going on. Um, and he goes out as a cabaret singer, uh, or his fiance goes as a cabaret singer undercover, and she does things a little too well yeah. and catches the attention of Dr. Orloff. Right. And uh, things kind of get crazy. <laughs> captures her and basically um, Dr. Orloff's disfigured sister he basically takes the skin and wants to like make her beautiful again so it's kind of a it's a touching family story I guess yeah in a really weird way I remember way. that servant that he has is really oh, creepy um, Morpho was that his Mor name Morpho yeah. yeah blind or whatever and also the, uh, the awful duff Dr. Orloff Jesse Franco later did uh, Definitely a Jack the Ripper with Claudius Kinski. Yes. He definitely used we'll a lot. We'll talk about that one too. Yeah, as he well. used a lot for that movie. So, so definitely check this one out. This is a really good, actually, early 60s film. Yeah. Um, definitely a classic from Jess Franco. One of the, the safer movies, I guess. It's twisted, but it's a safe movie, and we'll talk, we'll, we'll talk why. And anyone that thinks that Jesse Franco is a hack director really should see his earlier yeah. work because he really was a good, competent director. Oh, absolutely. What do you got, Skip Gordon? Oh, we're going a little modern here. Snuff 102. Um, basically, if you're... Wow, well, this isn't... This isn't your typical horror. This is, like, really extreme shit. So extreme horror fans apply only, you know? If you're yeah. a fan of, like, the, you know, toe tag picture stuff and, you know, any kind of snuff-type film, scrapbook, whatever. Fake snuff, of course. Fake snuff, yeah. Um, you'll probably eat this up. This is really brutal. Um, yeah, just killing man like it, it's brutal it's just really good uh release for massacre video i'm glad they finally put this out because it was it was actually hard to find oh, for a, a lot of those films were yeah. massacre video if you see this label at the bottom you pretty much know you're gonna get a good product so so yeah. oh, shit <laughs> and we're not going to shit um as we talked about uh Jess franco is going to be on this list much more oh yeah now. spanish now is going in order of course <laughs> Bloody Moon, yeah. uh, very infamous film. Severin released probably one of the best versions of this. Absolutely. Uh, very, very hard movie to find for a long time. It was banned in so many countries for the the Stone Mill yeah. chain, or, uh, circular saw scene. Right on the cover. Um, yeah. It was a video nasty for a long time. Oh, yeah. Um, this basically just has everything. Um, it's got the, they asked basically Jess Franco to create a movie that. Um, was an homage to 80, the 80s Euro trash later, well, the Euro trash of the early 80s, because this was 81. So he wanted something that, you know, he put in, of course, the boobs and the nudity, the, of course, the over the, I mean, the, the really good gore. I mean, the, yeah. the scenes themselves are done so well, practical effects. 
Um, of course, it has, of course, the the, the the edge clippers, so it's kind of like the party, oh, yeah. which is cool. There's some really clever kills. Oh, there. absolutely. This this was kind of all over the place. Definitely check out Bloody Mood from Jess Frank, but one of the gorier films absolutely. that he did. That's another really good film by Jess Frank, for sure. Yes. Um, we are what we are. We are. This actually, <laughs> this was a really... Shut up. This actually was a Zombie. really good movie. Um, cannibalism, family, pretty much. Uh, it was remade. Um, for our shores, and I must say, I've actually never seen the remix, so I can't judge it, but I heard it, that it's actually pretty good, but this one really is one you should check out from ISC Midnight. They always never put, fail. They always put up good stuff. Absolutely. But uh, We Are What We Are is a really good modern tale on cannibalism and uh, the breakdown of a family, basically. And good film. Check it out. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, this, this goes into... Some creature features are going to slugs. Slugs! Yeah. Classic film. Uh, yeah. Right up there with uh, Squirm. <laughs> so, 1996, so this is one of those lost 90s movies. Yeah. Um, it, it, it really is just one of those, um, you know, creature features. It kind of reminded me of, like, Night of the Creeps, you know, with those, like, slug things, that, except for they don't make his zombies, you know, but. Um, Thrilling. <laughs> um, J.P. Simon did this one. Um, I don't know what other work he really did. Um, Charles Billen, that movie comes Charles Billen approved because he had a magazine called Deep Red and he, that was one of the movies that was in it, Slugs. Yeah. Really good gore in that movie, really good. Surprisingly for, for uh, a, 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 either like a bug movie, um, yeah. you would think wouldn't be very gory or be a lot of really good uh, CGI, you know, but this one, They'll definitely delivers. They'll check out Slugs. Oh yeah, man! Slugs. You'll, you'll like it. Slugs is a good midnight movie. Oh okay. yeah, good creature feature. Jesse Franco again, man. He's dominating this Spanish horror. <laughs> they made over 130 movies. Yeah, yeah. go, go, go figure. figure. <laughs> Faceless. This was one of my absolute favorite movies from Jesse Franco. He really made a good film in this one. Um, Telly Savelas is in this as well, and uh, we all love Telly. <laughs> of course, Kodak. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, this is a really good one. Kind of loosely based, uh, kind of remake, not really remake, I think that's the wrong word, but maybe re rebooting, I don't know what the fuck the word is, but of uh, the classic French horror film, Eyes Without a Face. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this definitely was Jesse Franco's take on it. Really gory, really good acting. Um, the scene where they're locked in that room and you don't know whether they get out or not at the end. It's just it's kind of I like love a cliffhanger the, yeah, ending. That know? suspense was like yeah. it just like I said, just Franco, some of his films he had really good suspense. This is yeah. definitely one of them. So Faceless is great, check it out. Yeah, what year was that from? Oh shit, I threw <laughs> I wanna say eighty something. Eighty something, check it out here. Uh Pause for a moment. Eighty seven. Eighty seven, yeah. okay. Nice. Yeah. I forgot what year that was. That's a good one. Now we got a really Oh god, ghoul, you're gonna bring the mood down now. Um <laughs> <laughs> in a glass cage. Oh fuck! Um, Kill me now. Th this this goes into the creep factor of like twelve out of ten. Yeah. Um, short long story short, Klaus, who's a Nazi officer, or former Nazi officer, who really did some atrocious sexual things. <laughs> um, Nazi doctor. Yeah. And uh, he's he ends up. <laughs> falling from a building and ends up becoming a basically put in an iron lung and uh just all these sort of these visions that he has and he's kind of tormented by this kid that comes in and uh well it, it, it's hard to it's hard to say that movie without giving it away because there's yeah. such a good twist great ending story to it, you know and it's just one of those movies that it there are a lot of parts that will make you feel uncomfortable Very much. um it is, it is subtitled and it is a little longer. It's a little on the longer side, so it's kind of one of those. It's like, worth every minute, though. It is. If you have to watch this by yourself, I'll tell you that right now, because this is just something you gotta like focus on. If you're hanging out with friends and stuff like that, and you've got some jackass talking across your room, you won't get it, and you'll miss things. So definitely check out In a Glass Cage. <laughs> Don't want to miss that one. Shut That's up. a great movie. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> oh man, me and Google love this movie. Yeah, we love this whole series minus three, three fucks. Yeah, yeah. Well, one, like, and two, like open, open one, and, one and two were great, Rick. Um, this movie was also made for uh, us called Quarantine. 
Which I must say is really not that bad either, but this is where it all started with Rick. Um, <laughs> this movie really can put some color in your shorts in some spots, man. Like, like when they're in that apartment. Well, this chick, I think she's like doing a TV show or some shit, mm -hmm. or a newscast or some shit, she, and she yeah. follows this fire department. They get a call, it's kind of a routine, you know, I guess fire or emergency or whatever, and then they get there and it turns out that something completely that they're not prepared for, where there's like these vampire zombie fucking yeah. demonic remember the fat lady <laughs> when she runs after that was creepy dude oh yeah yeah, yeah that was and cool, at the though. end i mean i don't oh, god i hate giving the end away but man i got to okay just that that scene at the end yeah when she's in that this movie's room. not hard to get so i mean by yeah, all check means, out well, yeah definitely check out the series even if you watch three you know check them all out um Rick kicks ass but that's oh, yeah. That's an interesting Spanish one because you wouldn't think it doesn't yeah. look Spanish. At it was all. good enough to get a U.S. remake. In there you go. So. All right, moving on. The Adrian Garcia. What is that? Adrian Garcia. Yeah, Bog we kicked ass. Bog yeah. Bogley. I don't. Know. Yeah. Sometimes I can talk, man. <laughs> Somebody's got English titles, but the names not so much. But here comes the devil. Awesome. This movie is great. Creepy as hell. I showed um, that one recently, man. He yeah. Flipped, man. I own it, and I actually never watched it. I, we have so yeah. much, we have so much stuff, and it's like so many not hours in the day aside from work. Remember when hearing that one for an old room morgue, and I yeah. just checked it out. Um, basically, this, this these parents, their kids, kind of go off and into the mountains, and they did they they think they come back, but they really don't. And I'm not going to give that oh, kind of twister away. Yeah. But uh, yeah, they don't necessarily come back. Who you, you think they are exactly and, um, nicely put so definitely check out here comes the devil and there is a really such like a brutal murder scene in that oh yeah this just comes out of nowhere man yeah. like i swear to god like <laughs> it's just like i showed him that movie for the first time yeah. right? and, and like it was it was really surprising like, never would expect it at all so talk about taking the law into your own hands yes yeah, so definitely for the wrong reason actually. private yeah. justice yeah for the wrong reason check out here comes the devil guys really yeah. that's a you'd really like that it's a good thriller too we so. definitely recommend that movie here at the Sentinel. Absolutely. Sure. We recommend every movie we talk about on here that we're talking about. <laughs> we try, yeah, we try to give you the best product of whatever we're talking about at yeah. the time. And a Spanish horror, check out Anguish. Anguish is amazing. No one ever talks about this movie except Room Org Magazine and maybe some, uh, some other horror movies like there, and I'm stuff. Sure. Uh, this is from 1987. Uh, this movie was ahead of its time. It really was. Um, I gotta say, Zelda Rubenstein of Poltergeist fame is in this. She does a stellar performance as this demonic mother um, that just controls this guy who's a psycho to begin with, her psycho son who's a psycho to begin with. And it just involves piercing of eyes and all the stuff killing in a movie theater, <laughs> and there's a twist at the ending that you just have to see to believe. And man. Notice if we notice something about go. Spanish horror films, there always got a twist. There's there, a lot of yeah, weird there's stories. Either, there's so. either a twist or a really good payoff at the end that yeah. makes you watch the whole film through. Yeah. Anguish definitely is a first round knockout film. Check it out. Alright. Alright. They also dabbled into the HP Lovecraft and Stuart Gordon. Oh yeah, Brian Zuno. Um, of course, reanimator fame. Um, Dagon. Uh, this is a weird one, uh, but very <laughs> cool. <laughs> because it's uh, basically this couple gets a new yacht and they kind of go on a little cruise and they end up in a little, uh, in a little hiccup in the water. Yeah. And end up on this re, uh, you know, on this island of fish people. <laughs> and uh, from what I, I, just, I, I watched his drunk one night, and I remember I, I really liked it a lot because this this like head fish woman, I guess, the queen or whatever. Oh like, yeah, she had a nice rack. You got to see it too, which is even <laughs> better. I remember that. Um, but Paul basically kind of, she kind of seduces Paul and stuff like that, and. You know, the fish people themselves, all the practical costumes and the makeup was just, it's, it's there's so a, amazing There's a little bit movie. of CG in that, but oh, there's a, little a lot bit. of it is they're, practical. Yeah, they're, cool. and it's gory as hell. And that's uh, DDT did the special effects on this one. So, yeah, this is definitely um, very well done. Very this good. is this is one of those films where we talk about CGI where it's just a little bit and it's okay because... It's not overkill no, like today. It's not the entire movie, so... Yeah. Definitely check out Dagon though if you like HP Lovecraft yeah. adaptions like Cool Air stuff like that. 
You're gonna love that. It's, yes. a good, it's kind of a cool creature feature, but kind of not. It's it's a good mesh of creepy and all around cool. Definitely one of my favorites. And there's tits. <laughs> a lot of tits. <laughs> Spanish horror. Go figure. Yeah. Now this movie really knocked my socks off. This one really, really impressed me. This is a more modern one from 2012. It is called Sleep Tight. Now looking at the cover, you would kind of be like, eh, I don't know, man. But really, this movie is well, this is one of the most original movies I've seen in a long time. Basically, th this uh, apartment owner. I don't know if he's the owner, I think he just works there. I think he just works, I don't think he's the owner. No, he's not the owner, he just works there. But he has access to all the rooms in the apartment. And he falls head over heels for this really hot chick, I forget her name offhand, but she's really hot, he's Spanish again. And he just he just comes obsessed with her, to the point where, when she's at work, he will go in her apartment, go through her, her drawers, and literal drawers, and, and uh, just be a creep. A really creep and he would get so obsessed where he would actually wait for her to come home at night and sleep under her bed can you imagine that having your apartment there are monsters under your bed <laughs> yeah dude like it's amazing the way it was shot the way it was filmed the acting the guy that uh, Louis Tossar Tossar amazing actor he really sells it um Honestly, there's not a lot of gore, but there is a pretty brutal murder scene here and there. But it's more about suspense. It really is about building up the story. And I think Sleep Tight is fucking amazing, guys. It's an uncomfortable type of Very uncomfortable. Makes you kind of check under your bed before you go to bed. Make sure your uh, apartment attendant ain't under there. <laughs> Alright, next we got kind of a, a triple feature here. Oh, hell yeah. Here we go. Well, for a quad feature. One of the best. Tombs of the Blind Dead collection, of course, as sort of many of you, I'm sure our, a lot of our fans have this. Um, of course, Tombs of the Blind Dead, Return of the Evil Dead, The Ghost Galleon, and Night of the Seagulls, which is probably one of the silliest titles, even though there are seagulls in it. Um, yeah, basically, this is the Knights Templar movie, um, the whole series. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, this is the epitome, I think, of like 70s Spanish word. Absolutely. Um, the, I mean, we talk atmosphere, of course. Um, the atmosphere, just that, you know, it's the over the top dubbing on the bone crunching when they're like, you know, like. Don't forget in the ghost scale oh, where so the, the, the flames are higher than the ghost <laughs> sail. It's, you know, it's a total yeah. model in like a yeah. bathtub or something. But yeah. hey, man, it, the, like you said, the atmosphere in these movies are just yeah. amazing. Like that first. I mean, all of them, but when you, first, but the, when you first see them rising out of the tomb and they got oh. those cloaks on, they got the beards, they got mm -hmm. the ceremonial robes, and they're, you know, of course, they're, they're they can't find their way out of back from hell because their eyes were picked out by crows. And yeah, so it's now they, amazing. and, and it's cool because you hear the heartbeat and all of a sudden it's yeah. like... They hunt by the heartbeat, yeah, yeah they, they don't by, see. Right, so they hunt by sound yeah. and noise, and you, the earlier ones you hear the heartbeat. It's just, it's That's one cool. of those collections, watch them all. It's yeah, watch them all the back to back. Yeah. Amendo Diasorno, amazing Legend, director. Absolutely. Definitely uh, a staple of Spanish horror in its best. Yes. Absolutely. I have another good one called A Bell from Hell. This one kind of fell through the cracks. Not a lot of people talk about yeah, this one. Yeah, an interesting one. Yeah, this was a really good one. Um, I gotta say, of course, the, the story about the director. Um, what did, I gotta find his name here. Claudio. Goring Hill. Um, he actually, shortly after this film, he commits suicide, and I believe uh, he went up to the chapel where this movie was filmed, and he jumped off shortly after the film was made. Which has it's just one of those haunting things that come when you talk about a bell from hell, because it's it's an infamous thing that happened. And this guy could have went down to do so many thing, other things, because he was a really good competent director. I think a Dolphin Hell is a good film. Check it out. Awesome. There you go, guys. We're gonna take a. We're gonna do a little kill here. Sorry. Or uh, actually, we're gonna do a trailer here. So there you go. Roll. Cheers, guys. Los niños quieren ir al cerro de Calado. 
En una hora los quiero de regreso aquí. Los niños quieren ir al cerro de aquel lado. ¡Adolfo! ¡Sara! Quería que les haya pasado algo malo. en el cerro enjoyed the uh, Spanish trailer um, so we're gonna finish this up here with um, our top 20 I guess um, Spanish films the ones that I think really speak to the genre in many different ways as we've talked about from cannibals to creature features to just suspense and uh, zombies Sleaze. I mean Sleaze. it's all over the, it's all over the map which I think is so great about um, Spanish horror. Absolutely. Um, it's awesome. So, you're going to continue with The Blood Spattered Bride. This is from 72. Um, it's, it's it, This is one of those, like, <laughs> it's a hot movie to watch. <laughs> I guess you could put it that way. Yes. Um, there's a, you know, this woman marries into this family that's got these dark secrets and, um, so she gets these visions of like the, all this unholy like communion and forbidden sexual desires, all this kind of stuff, which is where the hot part comes in. Um, Vincente Arada did this one. Um, he also did. Um, re what the hell was it? Um, I can't remember what else he did. I can't think of him. I have no idea. Um, I know he did some other stuff. Um, all I know about Blood Spreader Bride is that's basically on a Sharon Eleven new story of Carmilla yeah. and the lesbian vampires. Really? Yeah. Yes. So definitely check out 1972's Blood Spreader Bride, another there's key a, element of 1970s. Of course, there's an awesome, infamous scene in that where she just stabs the shit out of somebody and just holds the heart above her. <laughs> and it's just like, it's just an awesome image. Mm -hmm. And of course, that scene at the end when they just blow the hell out of the coffin. The guy blows the hell out of the coffin. Yeah. yeah, that's a good one, man. I love it. It's a classic. Plus, better bride. Here's another classic here. Um, Armando Diaz Sorno, who we just talked about, he did the Blind Dead films. Also did the Lorelei's Grasp. This one is amazing. Um, basically, kind of a she creature uh, having a. Bad case of PMS, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah, it's like this creature, demon creature, but she's a she can turn from a beautiful woman into this demonic fish woman or something, a reptile, reptilian, I guess. The best way to describe it would kind of be like an updated version of the reptile from Hammer Films, I guess. You could probably say that, where it's kind of like a sexually repressed woman turns into a beast. Um, type story, you know, but he really hit the target on this one. Really good atmosphere with the, the uh, water and stuff. And definitely check out where nice grass. Alright, what you got, Will? Oh. Yeah, of course, we bring in our favorite company, Hunter Films. Um, bringing us kind of a double feature um, oh. Aftermath and Genesis. Yeah, they talked about this one many times. Uh, you know, Aftermath, obviously, you know, woman dies and she ends up in the 
mortuary, and well, the doctor does some very not nice things to the body. <laughs> Fucked with a knife. Um, very, re very uh, revolutionary film, I think, as far as like these autopsy type elements and really pushing the envelope. Um, and then, of course, Genesis, which is a short film, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and, uh, beautiful Nacho Sandwich. Nacho. Yeah, I always love that name. That's an easy one to remember. Nacho's a great, uh, great And, uh, basically, he, sculpt he sculptures his wife after she dies in a car accident. And her cast kind of, or her, like, body cast kind of starts bleeding and deteriorates. And so it's, a, yeah, it is a very well shot, um, Kind of a very depressing, yeah, very depressing film. Pretty beautiful, but and very depressing. What you do with your lover, you know, and kind of it's start gone. deteriorating yourself. Yeah. So definitely check out from Unearth Films. You can still get this one at Unearth Films as well on their website. So support definitely worth it. Definitely. It was out of print for a long time. I know they had a gore cover and <laughs> all sorts of stuff. But yeah. Yeah. This is a really good one. This is called H6 Diary of a Serial Killer. This one really slipped through the cracks, I think. Uh, this was on my show for the longest time, but uh, I actually watched it because we were doing this, putting together a Spanish episode, and it really was, really uh, impressed me a lot. Um, basically, there's this guy that's a psycho serial killer, basically, and he just lures these women to this huge abandoned hotel that he, uh, I think he was, in, I think he inherited it, I believe. I think he might have inherited it. And he was just, he was, you know, he was, he had it for hookers, bringing hookers back and killing them and torturing them, having sex with them. It's a very brutal film, um, very uh, realistic, really realistic gore. The blood looks amazing. Um, a twisted love story of short sorts as well. Um, this one really has a lot going on. You guys really should check out H6 Diary of Serial Killer if you've never seen it. That's a really good one, guys. And then, of course, it's got this Terrian video extreme. So if you see this label, you're pretty much going to get a good product as well. Mm. Definitely. It's got your Japanese titles. Ghoul, you got your last one. No, I planned. wonder what it is. It's not planned. Yeah, I said I wasn't going to do this. This is what's going to happen. Pieces. <laughs> of course, everybody, if you don't know already, this is my absolute favorite movie. Yes. Or, um... <laughs> we talked about this so many times. Yeah, so I'm not going to dabble into it too much. Um... <laughs> Yeah, it's a chainsaw killer. It's, um, I mean, the, there's so there's great gore in this movie. Linda Day George and Christopher George. Which we have a little treat. Wasn't that lovely? <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget. Um, for, you know, Chaz Bowne, of course, oh, definitely yeah. part of this one. So, 1982 pieces, one of the best slashers, I think, out there. Absolutely. And great acting, too, obviously. So, Pearl time sake, do the gardener face. <laughs> the last one I have, uh, let's see here. 1974, and we talked about this one so many times too in the past. Zombie episode 2. Let's yeah. Sleep in Corpses Lie, also known as The Living Dead the Manchester Morgue, directed by Giorgio Garou. Rest in peace. We just lost him not too long ago. I believe we lost him like two months ago, so it was pretty recent. But um, he was pretty old, but he made a lot of really good films, and definitely this, is, this one is definitely up there as among his best films, Very probably well the known. best known ones as yeah. well. Um, there's so many, I mean, Arthur Kennedy alone just sells the film as that asshole dickhead. Yep. You know? <laughs> well, yeah. You know, I have. Y'all obviously like, you have faggot clothes, you know, sex drugs, every show to built and I hate the police. You know, so many great quotable lines in this film. Um, really good gore as well. Uh, Especially at the end when they're all uh, on fire. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. And of course, George kind of, he kind of gets back at the dick, detective dickhead as well, you know, which is cool. Dick French. Definitely. Let's sleep in corpses live. Yes. All right, guys, that was our top ten each. Um, we got a few here. Of course, we talked about movies that... We got some honorable mentions Honorable here. mentions, so... Uh, honorable no, mentions are all good. What you got? Without further ado, Klaus Kinski and Jack the Ripper. Oh, yeah. Uh, of course, we did bring this up before, um, as you know, the Jack the Ripper story. Um, it's kind of, uh, I guess there really isn't much you can really say about it. You kind of, I remember you watched 
that really cool scene in the window when he's watching down in the courtyard and stuff. And I like when he's going to these brothels and trying to pick up these hookers. Yeah. Can, he plays it like a gentleman, but you can yeah. tell when you look. Well, Klaus Kingski, of course, he's, like, he's got anyways. that fucking face that just tells you psycho. Yeah. You know, in Sorry. real life he was too. But it is, it is one of the, definitely one of those um, yeah. cool Jack the Ripper uh, renditions. So definitely check out that one. That's definitely good animal mention. I have Cannibal Man. We talked about this one in our past. I believe in our Cannibal episode should make sense. Um, Cannibal Man is great, uh, amazing acting. Um, this is the movie where the infamous, uh, I think it's the beginning where they show the, the horse being uh, tortured and murdered, I believe. Mm -hmm. which that was banned kind of, for which a long is time hard because to watch, of that. Yeah. Because that was that. Well, it was it was actually shot, I guess, in a real yeah. factory that did yeah. that at the time. This was the '70s, different yeah. time and place, but uh, but this yeah. guy, this guy eventually just loses his insanity, and the bodies just start piling up, kind of Jeffrey Dahmer style, really. Where he has no place to put the bodies anymore, and then there, there's this, <laughs> there's this neighbor who's like a homosexual, I believe, and <laughs> yep. he's kind of got something for him. And, He's spying on him, and he's got these binoculars where he can look into his house, and he's seen him try to dispose of bodies, so he knows his secrets out and stuff. So it's kind of a psychological horror as well. Not you'd think it would be gory as hell, and it, there are some good gory yeah, moments good in it, but one, yeah. it's more about psychological, use your head type stuff. Mm -hmm. Really good. It's, what, it's more or less what you don't see. Really good honorable mention panel. This one we're definitely not talking about forever because oh, God. we did this the other night. Horror Express. Yes. Christmas. Me, but I believe you know the role. I ask what you back to your couch, man. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we're done. Uh, Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing, Telly Savalas, um, all star cast in this one by Gene Martin. Classic film. Um, this was 72 as well. Um, Classic. Yeah. We love Horror Express. That's like one of one of the best movies to put on when you got nothing else to watch. Talk to Alexander Sexton. Yes. <laughs> you just want to quote okay. the movie. You just want to have fun with the movie. And honestly, in all fairness, that movie really... It's a great movie. It is a great movie. Yeah. It really is. I mean... Yeah. It, Aside from all the joking and... Yeah, it actually really is serious, you know, when they're on the train and, you know, die of Satan, taking over everybody and... Yeah, when that creature gets loose and you back. realize the creature's not the... Yeah. Is not the one that's... <laughs> Possess, it's the demon that Kill. jumps from body to body, so it's cool. Killing the baggage man. Um, so, the yeah, last quote I'll say, Monster, what British you know? <laughs> <laughs> or Express is close. <coughs> I believe we talked about this in our Killer Kid episode, but I thought uh, it yes. would be appropriate. This actually was one of our kills that opened Yeah, who can kill a child. Um, for Spanish horror, I definitely had to include it in this. Um, there's so much been said about this movie, and of course, you know, uh, definitely Stephen King was uh, inspired by *The Children of the Corn*, rightfully so. Um, this movie was so ahead of its time. I mean, child killing kids, like Jesus mm -hmm. Christ, it's like totally taboo. But yeah. um, the part where he just <laughs> he takes that boozy or whatever, cool <laughs> killing guns, and just yeah. kills all those kids at the end. Oh yeah. my God, that's some powerful shit. It really is. Oh, yeah. It still holds up to. And the fact that his wife is pregnant and she can't run anywhere because she's pregnant. So it's like a case of there you are and you feel so sorry for her and all these killer kids. They killed all their parents and everyone, all the adults on the island. And they're just pretty much running amok, man. It's like mm -hmm. that piñata scene, one of my favorites, you know, where she slits the throat and stuff. That's, mm -hmm. that's amazing. Who can kill a child? All right, guys, we'll take a little break here. We're going to come back. Come back with us for Paul Nashy. You don't want to miss this one. You see it? Yes! While we were out here fumbling with that music, the lousy bastard was in there killing her! Bastard! 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 Paul Nashie was a Spanish actor, writer, director, producer who made well over a hundred feature films in Spain and specialized in fantasy and horror. Hey, what's going on, guys? As promised, this is our Paul Nashi tribute. Um, oh, yeah, it should be fun. Yeah, Paul Nashi was definitely a staple of Spanish horror. Um, a variety of rules. Of course, he's most known for Waldemar Daninsky, the werewolf. 
making his film debut. Absolutely. Um, he uh, he basically, as a child, his favorite heroes were uh, Robin Hood and Zorro, until he saw Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, and basically Lon Chaney Jr.'s Larry Talbot became his hero, and he wanted so desperately to break into film, and the Wolfman became his hero, and that was just tight childhood love that he never lost. and. Uh, he did a variety of things, uh, writer, producer, um, author, many things. He was a championship weightlifter. Um, yeah. That's a big guy. Yeah, he's a big yeah. guy, man. And, uh, he, he, he so, wrote yeah. a script for um, what would the U.S. would call, I'm not going to say the Spanish title because I can't say it, but the U.S. title is uh, the uh, Frankenstein's Bloody Terror. Um, that's what eventually would it be, who would be. He sold the script. Uh, they liked it, but the only problem is they had no one to play the Wolfman. And uh, of course, they looked at Nash, he was this big guy. So they're like, you, you work. He's like, I never acted in my life. But you got the, you got the handsome features for the ladies, and you got the buff believability to be a monster. Yep. So he basically just said, okay, I'll do it, and the rest is history. And of course, that character became... Waldemar Daninsky, the werewolf, which is a an iconic Spanish, not even just Spanish, just horror in general, the whole mm. horror genre, everyone knows who that is, and Paul Nashi in general. Paul Nashi's real name, I believe, is Jack Quinto Molina. Uh, he changed his name to Paul Nashi after a weightlifter, I believe. Um, they, the, they didn't like his, his real name, so he had to think of a name, which happens in, in cinema. Yeah. You have to change your name. Um, Basically, he's nicknamed as the Long Chaney of Spain because of all the variety of roles that he's done. Yeah, funny. Not just Over the Wolfman, but the, yeah, the Mummy, Frankenstein, mm -hmm. not Frankenstein, Dracula, um, the Satan, the Doctor, yeah. Doctor <laughs> Jekyll, Mister Hyde, uh, he yeah, Satan, Satan, Satan many times, <laughs> and numerous times. Yeah, and he Hunchback. Played, we'll and, get to these in the and, and this is kind of one of those like he was, it's like Vincent Price or anything like that where you could put him in any role and really he after so many films yeah. he I mean he played multiple roles in several films yes. the curse of the devil Satan in control of the body and the mind light the fire send me to my master take me Satan take me and doom the Donenskys forever the blood of a virgin. The jaws of a wolf. The night of a full moon. Thus will the descendants of Arrhenius become one of the truly damned. In the night of Valpurgis, Ilona accomplishes her mission. Waldemar, Melissa came to see me. She told me the whole story. Now you know that I murdered your father and Maria. But you're not culpable. You didn't invite this malediction. I want to help you. Only I can save you. My love will destroy the gray shadow, darling. I swear that you'll find peace. The curse of the devil. So that was a little history on... Shit. I'm going to break for a minute. I thought Larry Cohen came in the line. <laughs> Not quite. Yeah, all right. Let's start that again. Hey, guys. Hope you enjoyed that uh, little intro to Paul Nashi. Uh, now we're going to get into some of his well-known films. I um, can't say we own all these. No. But uh, I think we own a pretty good chunk of the good classics. Between the two of us, yeah. We're going to start off with uh, 1972 Vengeance of the Zombies. Um, yeah. This is the one movie that, well, one of the movies that uh, Paul Nashi plays multiple roles. Uh, plays the demon, plays the lover, <laughs> and the guy with the really, really hideous face. Yeah. Um, of course, this, you know, he's kind of a, we're going to nestle Paul in there. Um, but yeah, he basically summons the, the dead, these dead women to do his deeds. 
Um, he's got to fight. He, he has to find a virgin, basically, to um, what do you call it? Sacrifice her, more or less. Um, it's definitely it, visual. For, yeah, very. It, it's got a lot of occultism in it. Um, cool very soundtrack. Satanic. Cool yeah. soundtrack. Very. Yeah, it's it's very, definitely very seventies soundtrack. But Vengeance of the Zombies. Check that out. You get a lot out of that one. Satanism, zombies, and yeah. whatever. All things uh, Paul Nashi is known for, of course. Here's one, uh, Hanging Hangin Woman. Um, this is a really cheesy version of it. <laughs> good old Sinister Cinema. Sinister Cinema. cinema. <laughs> but, you know, it's still a good movie. There's actually a really good version of this uh, from Troma called, uh, um, you know what, I don't even fucking remember what the hell it's called, I'm sorry. No, the Hanging Woman. I'm, with. I'm, with. I'm sorry. It's yeah. Really, yeah, the Hanging Woman. Yeah, there's a good uh, uh, version from Troma. Um, this is kind of the cheap one, but um, this is a really good movie. Really good visuals. Really good uh, atmosphere. As most of the Spanish. I do like that cover though. That cover's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Uh, Paul Nash. He plays like this uh, kind of hermit servant that uh, pretty much does the master's evil bidding, sort of. Uh, very misunderstood. Uh, definitely, he. Uh, he has to abide by uh, this doctor's sinister uh, rules because he pretty much harbors him in the castle and everyone else is out to get him. You kind of feel sorry for Paul Nash in this one and definitely there's zombies in the end as well that come back from the grave. And these zombies look really cool. They got Megas crown on them and shit. It, looks, it almost looks a bit like Fulci zombies except way before. It's always cool, yeah. Yeah, Hanging Woman was cool, guys. Check it out. Alright. His first role as Wolfman in Frankenstein's uh, Bloody Terror. Which Frankenstein is not even in. Yeah. <laughs> Oddly enough, yeah. One of the most misleading titles ever. Um, but basically these uh, these gypsies remove this cross from this corpse and it, um, from Count Im Im Imer, Imer Wolfstein. Um, so now they unleash the curse of the demon, and this, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> Paul Nashi kind of gets in the way and gets bitten by and gets lycanthropy. Yep. Becomes the the werewolf for the first Waldemar time. Waldemar Daninsky. And, and, uh, totally. and this, um, he, wanted, he leads out to find this doctor to kind of help him, but he finds out that him and his wife are vampires. <laughs> so, um... Definitely misleading title, but definitely a cool film from '68, I believe. So real, quite early for Nashi's work. So absolutely. This is probably his last official work, and um, he's actually not in the film per se. This is Wax. Um, basically, this is kind of a retelling, a modern uh, retelling of Mystery of the Wax Museum or House of Wax or something like that. Um, Paul Nashi, like I said, he's not physically in it because unfortunately he died before this movie was made, but he was really good friends with the director, and somehow uh, he got uh, Paul Nashi's voice, and he wanted to give him some sort of a homage, because uh, they were really dear friends, and uh, mm -hmm. he decided that this one wax sculpture dummy or whatever is going to have Paul Nashi's voice, and the dummy kind of looks like Paul Nashi too, which is kind of cool, and uh, has his, probably his last ever vocal recordings voice recordings in this film. It's just kind of cool. Uh, it's an okay movie. I mean, it's 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 all right. I'd check it out. Wax. Right on. Moving on to another werewolf movie. Curse of the Devil. This is one of my favorite ones. It's one of my personal favorites. Too. Um, the atmosphere in that movie is amazing. Again, stars as Voldemort. Yeah. Um, That's one of the better ones, man. Yeah, this, this was always kind of cool because it deals with... Um, more of the satanic coven idea. Yeah, there's a lot of satanism. Um, and I think his I think his werewolf makeup in this one was I think a best out of the well trilogy I guess you can call it that. Um, that was from seventy three. Was it seventy three? And the, and the cool thing about if we talk quickly about Paul Nash, he was very busy man. I mean, he had, every year he was turning out these movies, and the seven, the early seventies oh, were just Christ. amazing. He's so busy. I mean, <laughs> I've never, I, I can't remember. I mean, 
you know, like I said, we said Vincent Price, Christopher Lee, Peter Cushion, guys like that. They were always busy. Lon Chaney, um, Boris Karloff. Boris Karloff. Yeah, they're always busy doing something. And honestly, that's what you why they're so memorable. He's in that same think. caliber for sure. Mm. There's another kind of modern one called School Killer. Um, this one is pretty good. It's kind of a slasher. Paul Nashie plays like this creepy uh, security guard, and uh, he's a psycho and basically takes out these kids that are. I think they break in a school or they're partying in a school, I believe. And he, he's there and he just terrorizes them and just uh, kills them in clever ways. It's kind of more of a, sl a slasher film. One of Paul Nashie's uh, lesser known films, but School Killer is pretty cool. Uh -huh. Check it out. Werewolf versus Vampire Woman. Yes. Um, women travel to. That's the US title, by the way. Yeah, this was, um, I can't even tell you how to pronounce that um, in the Spanish. I think that was that. Werewolf Shadow, I believe. Um, I mean, the Spanish, there was some weird one, but... Um, yeah, Night of the Wolpergus. Wolpergus some, yeah. Something. Um, but yeah, it's it's your basically vampire versus werewolf woman. Or vampire woman versus werewolf, sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Boy, it's late. Yeah, a um, couple drinks. <laughs> But yeah, it's, you know, two women travel to the countryside and, uh... They're trying to find the, the legend of this countess. And they find it. And they find <laughs> it, and they take the dagger out of her, and then basically she comes back yeah. to life, and then she takes one of the girl's friends, turns her into a vampire, and then Paul Nashi is, is the guy, or Waldemar Dolinsky yeah. really is, is the guy again. that takes, him, takes them in to his castle, and then basically he still has that curse on him, turning him into a werewolf. Mm -hmm. And he just got, the only way he can uh, die peacefully is by the hands of a lover. So he has to find a woman that would either put a silver bullet in his heart or a dagger, a silver dagger in his heart. Good love story. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> he had a heart, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, of course. Hunchback of the Morgue. This is one of my favorites. This is one of my personal favorites next to that one. Yeah. This is definitely one of my favorites. Um, Paul Nashie really showed what versatile acting ability he had in this one. Um, you really felt for his character. Uh, I think his name is Goto, Goto, I believe. He plays a hunchback, and it's actually he plays a really sympathetic character for once. Like you actually really feel sorry for him because you know, if you know the Hunchback in Notre Dame story, um, you know Quasimoto. Everyone was making Very fun sad. of him because of his yeah. his, his, his deformities, deformities and yep. shit. And this is pretty much kind of Paul Nashie's version of that, I guess. That's definitely a homage to Long Cheney Sr. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he really hit the target. Uh, you really feel for his character. And then when the lover of his life dies, he just kind of goes on a rampage and uh, just goes on a rampage and kills people. But uh, it's a good one. Much better than more. Paul Nashie and his fans. Second favorite, of course, not the best werewolf makeup ever Fury of the Wolf Man. That is my least favorite. Yeah, um, it's also known as the werewolf. Never, the Wolfman never sleeps. Um, 1972. Uh, this, yeah, this one was kind of uh, was bitten by a yeti in Tibet. It, I mean, it's a weird, it's a weirder story. Yeah. Um, but he's got Lola, his reluctant lover. <laughs> of course, you know the sexy Paul Nashie. Paul Nashie's always getting the women. Um, he's like the Elvis of Spain, dude. Yeah. He's got the fucking sideburns. At this time, yeah. yeah. But yeah, this definitely it was it's a good movie, don't get me wrong, but yeah, I was got the ladies. But it's the weakest one I think out of the movie the wolf movies using. And speaking of getting the ladies, here's a shake for you. <laughs> the people who in the dark, basically a group of people that go to this castle for a good shake down, good time. And basically there's like this nuclear explosion outside and radiation just contaminates everybody and everyone. And it's basically a struggle to survive, and you know, friend turns into foe, and you don't know who to trust. Kind of loosely based on uh, Night of Living Dead, I guess you can kind of say, or maybe even the Crazies mm -hmm. would be the best way to describe it. I would say the Crazies. Yeah. It's got more of a radiation breakdown type thing, a breakdown of society and shit. Uh, Sean Cunningham, who went on to do a Friday the Thirteenth film, actually directed this one. This is a really early credit by Sean S. Cunningham, which is kind of cool. People in the dark. One of my favorites. Oh, Alright, your last one. Rojo Sangre. Uh, this would have been yeah. 2004. Um, basically, Paul Nashie plays this guy who is a, an actor who's kind of washed up because he's taking, he's, he's been taken over by like the new generation. 
yeah. um, cell phones and technology and then the young kids <laughs> and things like that. So he will do anything, including selling his soul to the devil in order to... Your zombies take it right here. <laughs> in order to um, be great again. But then he kind of goes on a murdering rampage to those who kind of shunned him out of the business. Um, so really kind of a cool movie. Um, yeah, Fangoria International. Yep. Definitely check that one out. Uh, a decent, Rojo Sangre. A rabbit descent into hell. Into horror hell. Decent. He says decent, not even it's descent. Decent. That's decent. hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> it looks we've, like a cool we've actually made that mistake many times on this. Well, the beginning, hell. I didn't even know how to spell it. Yeah, we made decent. it. Decent. <laughs> and myself and Glue are going to present the best because this is one of my personal favorites, it probably is. And that is Horizons from the Tomb. Oh, you want to talk Atmosphere Jack, this one delivers oh. through with the Men of the Asorno, uh Tombs of the Blind Dead films. Yep. Um, this one definitely, Paul Nash, he's his best, kind of plays like a, a Gillis Durais of a serial killer. Um, definitely resurrected by... Uh, he he, turn, he can he has this power to hypnotize people to make them his servant and do his evil and basically he reincarnation re, reincarnates himself Ooh. and definitely wants his uh, his bride his satanic bride reincarnated as well and they both just go on a rampage throughout the country they uh, they have the power to raise the dead so zombies are running everywhere as well <laughs> this movie just has so much going on. Mm. Um, Definitely one of my though. favorites. Yeah, it's a fun to watch. Paul Nash, he looks really badass with the beard and the long hair. I just think this is one of his best roles. That was one of my favorites. See, I always wish, I always wish Paul Nash he played like Rasputin or something like that, because I just figured he would. Fit he did that in uh, Rojo Sangri. Yeah, in, in, in he, a he, sense. He, uh, yeah, he um, played a bunch. Of, he played Jack the Ripper. He played a uh, Gilles de Oh, he, he played, did everything. He played a lot of people in that movie because he actually. Um, was hired as a as a as a doorman, mm -hmm. and he's like, I'm not a statue, I'm an actor. You know, yeah. and he wants to find. That's a good movie, actually. Yeah. But that's our Paul Nashie trip. But honestly, Paul Nashie, you know, made a book called uh, Memoirs of a Werewolf. Memoirs of a Werewolf. Check that out. Mm -hmm. He's also definitely uh, all over Rue Morgue. All over Rue Morgue, and definitely horror mags, rightfully so, because yep. he's an amazing. He was amazing guy. Amazing talent. Amazing person. Yeah. He uh, did Necrophagia's uh, video for. Frayed lips, is, uh, frayed, lips of frayed lips of silence. Of silence. Yeah. Uh, that was really cool. We kind of showed the, it in the beginning there. Check that out. Um, but yeah, he was a good guy, and uh, mm -hmm. he's been gone for a while now. But I thought we'd give him an honest tribute because Spanish, Spanish horror. horror. You Spanish. can't have Spanish horror without Paul Nash. You kind of like peanut yeah. butter yeah. and jelly. Just or just Franco, good. but you know. Yeah. Then we started getting into some weird smut films, and we don't need to do that. Yeah. So. But that was our Paul Nashie and our Spanish horror and that's, There you guys go. That's episode 32. It's all wrapped up. Sent your way, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Again, we, we want to... Sorry. <laughs> we want to plug in. Make sure you guys check out our website. Check out, you know, all the episodes are always going to be on there. Um, we post links, everything like that. Absolutely. So definitely check that out. Support your underground horror scenes, Unearthed Films, Morbid Visions. Um, toe tag, do all that stuff, get out there. We also Support have a guys. lot of cool shit coming for you guys in the future. Summertime. Summertime's coming, <laughs> so that means we're going to be running around filming shit. Um, we're also going to be making some short films. We're also going to be... Uh, we're teasing an idea about an actual podcast, too, so maybe yeah. we'll do that. Um, just have to stick around and see Lots what happens, cool stuff, guys. guys. But so now, then, with that being said... <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Ghoul. <laughs> You are. Cool. <laughs> and I'm Skid Gore. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you all very much. Hail Paul Nashi and Spanish Horror on Descent into Horror. Hell. Check it out. Eat my asshole.